so I think um, we can take off right now. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, my name is Dr. Chen Akano. I apologize that um, I wasn't able to do it last Sunday. I was um, hoping I could um, get through with the meet and greet and then <laughs> do this at the same time when I'm home, when I get home. But incidentally, I just, I was too tired. I was, I just couldn't do it. So and I apologize for that. But today, I, I hope um, I'm going to be able to do justice to this topic. So the topic we're going to be talking about today is blood pressure related problems. Uh, uh, basically, uh, more of hypertension. So we're going to be talking about, um, we define what uh, blood pressure is. We link it to hypertension. Uh, we talk about um, types of hypertension, causes, what puts you at risk of developing hypertension prevention, how to diagnose hypertension, treatment, complications, hypertension in pregnancy, how hypertension affects pregnancy, treatment. I think I've mentioned complications. So we shall start. I will start by um, defining what blood pressure is blood pressure as the name sounds is is pressure in the blood so to speak is the force of blood against your arteries as your heart pushes blood around your body so is that force and there's a pressure at which this is done, uh, which is a function of this um, force as well as resistance in the walls of your arteries. I may also want to define what arteries are in case if you don't know what they are. Arteries are the blood vessels that take oxygen rich blood from your heart to other parts of your body. So arteries take oxygenated blood oxygen rich blood so so when you um normally there is a pressure with which your heart beats and pushes blood into the system through your arteries so this is what blood pressure is i'm not talking about high blood pressure i'm just talking about blood pressure under normal circumstance we have uh, some people are normotensive. Normotensive means that their blood pressure is normal. I'm going to be telling you the levels later. Some people are hypotensive, meaning that their blood pressure is lower than normal. And it's also a problem. While some other people suffer from high blood pressure, known as hypertension. Hypertension. So we have normal tension, hypotension, and hypertension. Is hypertension that we refer to as high BP. Everybody says, oh, you suffer from BP, but your blood pressure can be normal, it can be low, and it can be high. Even though hypo is not as common as the hyper. So I'm going to now tell you uh, who can suffer from blood pressure. Or hypertension. Anybody, including a child of one day, can have problem with blood pressure. Even a child of one day, all till um, 110 years, 120 years. Anybody, man, woman, white, black, Asians, and what have you. Even though it is commoner in the black and Asian uh, race than the Caucasians. Then we we'll move on to types of hypertension. This is important. We have what we call primary hypertension, which we used to refer to as essential hypertension. We also have what we call secondary hypertension. Primary hypertension 
constitutes to about 90 to 95 percent of all cases of hypertension and this is the hypertension that there is no obvious cause and it has got no cure even though it can be managed with with lifestyle and medication but it has no cure nobody knows why you have this problem and it normally develops slowly and becomes chronic and is usually lifelong so if you have this type of hypertension which is which constitutes about 90 to 95 percent of all cases of hypertension you are most likely going to suffer it forever and you do not know why and it has got no cure no cure all it can do is to control it to normal level and you can live as well as possible as normal as possible so but i will explain uh, the levels uh, as time goes on why a secondary hypertension which constitutes about five to ten percent is that type of hypertension that normally happens um, uh, suddenly has got causes can be if the causes are treated the blood pressure and the problem that caused it could could resolve and you may not suffer from hypertension again this i'm using may so secondary hypertension have got um, uh, identifiable reason why you're suffering from that from that hypertension while the primary hypertension there is no known cause there is no obvious reason and it cannot be cured even though it can be treated and managed so i've defined primary and secondary hypertension the next question is that how do you diagnose hypertension how can you diagnose so i will explain in simple terms diagnosis of hypertension is done through blood pressure measurement through uh, with an equipment called sphygmomanometer which is this big blood pressure equipment that you see around sigma manometer and when you're measuring blood pressure you must be aware that when they tell you your blood pressure they will say your blood pressure is 140 or 120 over to 70. so what it means is that when your blood pressure is being measured two types of blood pressure are measured the first one and the one that is on top is called systolic blood pressure and this measures the force of of the pressure in your arteries when the heart contracts and pushes out blood so that high pressure that is measured when your heart contracts and pushes out blood is called the systolic blood pressure while the diastolic pressure is the pressure in those arteries in between heartbeats when your heart has relaxed so you, the, the diastolic is the low one the systolic is the high up one the top one and the systolic is usually higher than the diastolic all right so that's about uh, how to and what you measure in blood pressure then the question is how do you measure it there are two ways there are two common ways you can measure blood pressure number one is by um, using the manual blood pressure equipment that's figma manometer using the manual one or the automated one the manual one is better in the sense that it doesn't matter whether your pulse is irregular the person checking your blood pressure would hear with the stethoscope you know what stethoscope is your hearts uh, those heart um, uh, sounds and they will know when to uh, uh, measure the blood pressure you can hear it the automated is good that you don't need to do anything the, all you need to do is just to tie the cuff and the hand and put it on and he reads it but the problem with that is that you will have to check the patient's pulse to make sure it is regular for you to use automated if the blood pressure wasn't if the pulse rate or the heartbeat isn't regular and you use the automated the result may be wrong so what it means is that for you to use the electronic or automated blood pressure equipment 
you will need to check the pulse first and ensure that the pulse is regular. Otherwise, it's not going to give you an accurate reading. Secondly, the size of the calf. The calf is what you tie, the one you tie around your um, arm. The size matters. There are different sizes for different sizes of people. So if you use a small calf for somebody that is big, the blood pressure will be higher than what it should, should be. If you use a very big calf for somebody whose arm is very small, the blood pressure may be lower than what it should be. So for you to get an accurate blood pressure measurement, you will need to use the right size of calf. Calf is that thing you tie around for the size of the hand. If you look at any calf, you will see there the size for which it's meant for is written. So if you go and use one small calf and tie it around somebody that has very big biceps and then you're pumping and the thing is pulling out and everything, the blood pressure would be higher than what it should be. So the size of the calf is important when you're measuring blood pressure. And also, if you're using the electronic, which because electronic or automated is sensitive, the patient needs to be quiet. The patient shouldn't be talking. The patient shouldn't be moving arms and legs while you're checking the blood pressure. These things could affect the blood pressure reading. So these are the things you need to know. Then, if your machine is good and you've done use the right calf and you measure the blood pressure in the correct manner you will get your readings and then you will now decide what to do from there right there are certain things i will need to discuss before i go in to um, go ahead to discuss um the um what is what levels will constitute them um, hypertension or hypotension or normal tension but i want to discuss some things there are something we call clinic blood pressure measurements this is measurements that you get when you go to the hospital or clinic and the nurse or the doctor checks your blood pressure it is called clinic blood pressure measurement there are something we call home blood pressure measurement which is the blood pressure you get when you measure in the comfort of your home when you're relaxed. So, there's something else we call maxed blood pressure, hypertension, and also there's another one we call ambulatory. I will explain it so for you to understand it in the context. So, there are some people that when they go to hospital and they check their blood pressure, the blood pressure usually shoots up. But when they go home and check the blood pressure, the blood pressure goes down. It will not be the same. So anytime they go to the hospital, their blood pressure goes up for no reason. This is what we call white coat hypertension. Because usually the nurse and the doctors would normally wear white coat. It's an assume, it's an assume that because of fear of those white coat, that is why your blood pressure shoots up. So with people that have this problem, that their blood pressure is a lot higher in the clinic than at home. How do we know, how do we mitigate this problem and get the exact accurate measurement of their blood pressure? There are two ways to mitigate this problem. There are something, I'm not sure whether it's... Um, I'm not too sure whether it's available in Nigeria, but it may be. I think it should be. It's called ambulatory blood pressure measurement. They put a little um, equipment on your belt, on your waist, and then you go home. And that measures um, your blood pressure to, uh, twice a day, or I mean around the clock, so to speak, for a couple of days, and then we take an average. The machine measures it. And that normally gives an accurate measurement of your blood pressure is called ambulatory blood pressure measurement there's something we call home blood pressure measurement so if you have this problem of white coat syndrome you can go home with your blood pressure machine especially automated as long as your pulse is regular and the machine is working well you'll be asked to check your blood pressure twice a day morning and evening for 
between four days and seven days, preferably seven days. You check it in the morning, you check, and each time you check twice, check left hand, check right hand, maybe between one minute in between, and then record it on a piece of paper. And at the end of the day, you take it to your doctor or to your nurse, they will get an average, take an average of this blood pressure measurements, especially from the second day, and that will be your exact blood pressure. This is because some people suffer from white coast syndrome. Your blood pressure goes up when their blood pressure is measured in a hospital or clinic setting. So that has brought us to uh, uh, ambulatory blood pressure measurement, home blood pressure measurement, and white coast syndrome. There are also people that suffer from what we call masked, like somebody wearing a mask masked hypertension in which the uh, clinic blood pressure is lower than the ambulatory which is which is unusual normally the ambulatory is, is lower because it measures your blood pressure all the time and takes an average so normally so what i'm trying to say is that if you if you went to a hospital and a doctor or took your blood pressure, oh, your blood pressure is high, and says, I'm going to start your medication, say no to that doctor. Say no. You cannot start me on blood pressure medication by one-off blood pressure reading. Unless, I will explain that later, but done, they will need to at least take your blood pressure measurement more than two or three times, and it's consistently high before they will consider that. And at every sitting, when your blood pressure is checked, the practice is that they should check left arm, right arm, compare the readings. If the readings are um, wide apart, maybe up to 20 um, millimeter mercury higher on one hand than the other, you would have to repeat that. You ask the nurse or the doctor to repeat the blood pressure measurement again two times. So normally, at the end, the lower blood pressure is taken as the blood pressure reading at that point in time. So a one-off blood pressure reading is not adequate. So that's the concept of uh, home blood pressure measurements, ambulatory measurements, and um, clinic measurements. I hope I'm making some sense there. Okay. So, so when your blood pressure has been measured and is high, and you do the ambulatory, ambulatory, it is high. I will give you the um, levels later. I don't want to repeat it. So if it's high, then the, the, the challenge between the doctor uh, before the doctor now is that, is this a primary hypertension where there's no cause, there's no, uh, it cannot be cured, uh, you know, and it's going to be lifelong, or is this secondary hypertension where something is causing it? So what it means is that the doctor will ask um you to do some tests you know some of the tests you may have to do will check will be like to check your cholesterol levels check for diabetes do what we call hbo1c you do an ecg which is an electro uh, cardiograph a little uh, electrocardiogram uh, you have to do that you will, yeah, they will also take your urine for what we call urine analysis to analyze it also check your kidney function test which we call them um, urea and electrolyte and creatinine your thyroid functions would also be will be checked you know and um, the doctor may should also use what we call a fundoscope and look into the back of your eyes to see whether there are damages to your to the back of your eyes so these are some of the things that the doctor would need to do before considering whether to go ahead and um, start treating so we have um, defined blood pressure we have talked about nomentensive, hypotensive, hypertensive. We've talked about uh, types of hypertension, primary or secondary. We have also talked about the fact that anybody, including a one-day-old child, can suffer from high blood pressure, which is hypertension. And then we talked about um, how to diagnose with the machine called Sigma Manometer. We talked about the manual as well as the electronic. And we have talked about the problem with electronic, especially when the person's pulse is irregular. And then uh, making sure the size of the cuff that you're using to measure this blood pressure is um, 
adequate for this size of the person's um, uh, biceps or your arm and then so i've listed some of the blood tests you will need to do uh, to be able to make that diagnosis okay so the next thing to talk about now would be what puts people at risk of developing high blood pressure since 90 to 95 percent of the cases of high blood pressure does not um, do not have a cause so what we have are risk factors things that put you at risk to developing them one is genetic it could run in a family secondly secondly obesity if you're so fat you're more liable to developing uh, hypertension if you are not exercising you're more likely to develop hypertension if you're pregnant pregnancy can put you at risk i'll talk about that in a little while um, if you're not um, if you're smoking if you're drinking alcohol excessively if you're taking some tablets especially things like um, uh, contraceptive pills you know these things put you at risk or if you're diabetic too you know it could put you at risk um, to developing um, uh, hypertension so in a sense for you to lower your risk of developing this hypertension you will have to eat healthily like cut down on high salt diet you will need to lose weight if you're obese you will need to exercise up to 30 minutes of exercise every day you know you will need to cut down on your um, drinking and um, reduce it to maybe one to two uh, drinks a day, sensible drinking, healthy, um, healthy diet. And um, you also would, um, if you're taking contraceptives, if you're at risk and your blood pressure is high, then you may have to stop, especially the ones we call um, combined contraceptive pills. The uh, pro pro uh, progesterone-only uh, contraceptives are better when you are at risk. So, so I've been able to cover all this. So I will now go and um, what do I want to cover now? I've done up to number ten. So I'm going to talk about. I've talked about prevention. So I don't want to forget anything. So okay. So I'm going to talk about the symptoms of hypertension symptoms are uh, the uh, things that you notice that makes you think that you have hypertension things that you will complain to the doctor oh doctor i've got um you know i'm vomiting or something that's symptom doctor my leg is spinning me that's symptom so the symptoms of hypertension number one most people that are hypertensive do not have symptoms that's why it's called a silent killer so you can just be walking about with very high blood pressure and no symptom. Most people that are diagnosed hypertension, uh, hypertension or hypertensive are uh, done af uh, after routine uh, examination. Maybe they went for something else, they checked their blood pressure. Oh, your blood pressure is high. Or maybe they were unwell for malaria and then, you know, when you go to the hospital, the nurses will check your blood pressure, pulse, temperature, and then they will know. It's not as if... Um, but some people do have symptoms you know some symptoms are suggestive as well but they're not specific you cannot say oh because of this symptom it is hypertension but if you do have hypertension you can have those symptoms and they include things like headache especially headache which we call occipital the back of your head and which is worse in the mornings that's one of them you may feel sick you may be lightheaded headed you may feel dizzy you may have blood vision, you may um, be confused, you may um, have nosebleed, you may have ringing sensation in your ear, you may have this, what we call vertigo, this feeling like the room is uh, running around you. These are some of the symptoms you may have with hypertension. But if you develop complications, which I'm going to discuss, you may have further symptoms which are worse. So what are the complications of hypertension that you can have? And then obviously you can have the symptoms of this complication. Number one is stroke. You know stroke, everybody knows stroke. So 
hypertension, high blood pressure can cause stroke. So with stroke, you can lose consciousness, you can get confused, your face will droop, you will lose your speech, you may lose your movement, you know, the stroke, and, and it could kill you. So number one is stroke. Number two, you can have heart attack, which we call myocardial infarction. You may have a heart attack from hypertension. And the symptoms you have, like you have central chest pain, like somebody sitting on in the middle of your chest, and the pain may radiate to your your arms or to your neck or to your jaw, and you're sweating and you're feeling sick and vomiting. These are some of the symptoms that will tell you that oh my god, I think I'm having a heart attack, and hypertension can cause that. Hypertension can also lead to heart failure your heart would fail and your heart will stop functioning properly and the, some of the symptoms you may have with heart failure will be things like um, your leg may swell your tummy may swell you may have problem with breathing especially especially when you're lying down flat you won't be able to lie down flat in your bed you need several pillows to prop you up to be able to breathe you know what we call um, we have what we call autopnea means um, difficulty in breathing when you lie down so you will need pillow to pop you on you can also have what we call um, uh, uh, difficulty um, in breathing on a suction maybe if you just walk from your kitchen to your room you become breathless or if you, the normal things you you could do before you couldn't do them because when you do take little do a little exercise you become breathless you can also have what we call paroxysmal nocturnal nocturnal dyspnea PND, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. When uh, you'll be woken up in the night by cough, and then you'll be coughing off white, frothy um, sputum, you know, and then you're breathless. So these are some of the symptoms you may have from this heart failure caused by hypertension. I'm not trying to say that it's only hypertension that can cause these things, but I'm saying that hypertension causes them, and you may have these symptoms. You can also have what we call what we used to call acute renal failure, but it's now called acute kidney injury from, uh, from um, hypertension, meaning that your kidney has um, failed you know, acutely in the short term. And um, at this point in time, your kidney is no longer functioning properly, as in it's no longer filtering your blood, and then you may stop um, passing urine. So you may stay days without passing urine, even though you're drinking, you know, and um, it's not as if you have an obstruction uh, from your uh, kidney, uh, from your bladder to out that you know uh, urine will not be able to pass. It's, it is that you are not producing urine. So it's called acute kidney injury. Hypertension can cause that. Hypertension can also affect your vision. You know, cause visual impairment, and that's what we call hypertensive retinopathy, and it can also lead to blindness. Hypertension can cause that. Hypertension can cause uh, what we call um, aneurysm, you know, like your, your, your vessels will dilate and it can even burst and it can kill. So these are some of the complications of hypertension. We also have what we call, excuse me, let me just take some water. Okay. There's something we call hypertensive crisis. There are certain things, we, what we call hypertensive crisis. Hypertensive crisis is um, a kind of um, emergency associated with hypertension. There's one we call hypertensive urgency, in which case your blood pressure is so high, over 180, um, higher than 180 over 110, but you do not have symptoms of uh, organ failure. Your organs are still functioning properly, even though your blood pressure is very high. There's another one we call hypertensive emergency, where your blood pressure is so high, over 180, 180 over 110, more than that, and you have evidence of heart failure or kidney failure or lung failure or you know, liver failure. They just fail. So that becomes life-threatening that your blood pressure has to be crushed. If you suffer from hypertensive urgency, which is high blood pressure, very high, without evidence of um, 
organ failure, you can be treated with tablets over the next 24 to 48 hours. But if you have the hypertensive emergency, you cannot wait for tablet. You cannot be treated with tablet because you could die. So you need injection. There is an urgency to bring down your blood pressure. Otherwise, if it's not done, all those failed organs that were failing will all fail and you die. So these are um, hypertensive crises. Okay, so I need to talk about what is the cutoff in your diagnosis of hypertension. What blood pressure would you have? And they say uh, you are hypertensive, hyper at the moment. All right, okay. So let's start with normotensive. What is normal blood pressure? What is normal blood pressure? So in what we call... Hello, am I back? So I'm back now. Oh, sorry. It's a logical um, issue. So I was talking about... Um, what was I talking about now? Um, yeah, I was talking about how to diagnose... I mean, what level of blood pressure is... Um, abnormal you know either low or high well, so i wanted to start with what is normal in in physiology there's something we call physiological man a physiological man is a man that weighs 70 kg with lean you know uh, muscle and everything so that healthy physiologic man is expected to have a blood pressure of 120 over 80. 120 is the systolic, 80 is the diastolic, physiologic man. But that is not how it works. How many people out there is physiologic? So what it means is that we have a range of readings that we consider normal. And then um, your blood pressure also depends on your age. So what we do, um, we classify the age into three. Children from the 1 to 18 years, then 18 years to 80 years, and then 80 years and above. So the normal 18 year to 18, 80, 18 years to 80, what is normal blood pressure is systolic of 90 to 140 over 60 to 90. So your blood pressure would be considered normal up to 140 over 90. So if your blood pressure, I'm talking about clinic blood pressure that you've been that we measured in clinic. So if you measure your blood pressure in the clinic is 140 over 90, 140 over 85, 135, it is normal. So that is normal. Any blood pressure below 90 to 60 is called hypotension. That's low, low blood pressure. You know, without blood pressure, you start feeling dizzy and giddy and falling about. It can break your bones. So we talked about normal and we talked about hypo. And then hyper is blood pressure over 140 over 90. Any blood pressure that's higher, up to that and higher, is considered abnormal. But that doesn't mean... That if your blood pressure is 140 to 90, you need to be treated. We have three stages of hypertension. Stage one is if your blood pressure is between systolic of 140 to 159 and your diastole is 90 to 99. So if your blood pressure falls within this range, you are said to be suffering from hypertension stage 1. That is systolic of 140 to 159 over 90 to 99. That's stage 1. Why stage 2 is if your blood pressure is from 160 over 100 all the way to 180 over 120. Why stage 3 is anybody that their blood pressure is over 180, over 120. I'm assuming that at least uh, most of you have an idea of what blood pressure reading looks like. Right. So, 
let's talk about before we talk about treatment i want to talk about the impact of hypertension in pregnancy so if a woman is pregnant and their blood pressure is high that pa that patient may have either of three types of hypertension there are people that were already hypertensive before they became pregnant so we call that pre-existing hypertension they already had the hypertension before they became pregnant then there's another group we call gestational hypertension these people became hypertensive because of pregnancy they were not hypertensive before they took in it was this pregnancy that caused their hypertension but i'm also going to differentiate it from a third class called preeclampsia this preeclampsia is another type of hypertension that happens in pregnant women especially in the second trimester what how do you differentiate it from the gestational since both of them uh, started in pregnancy with the preeclampsia you would have the patient would have high blood pressure along with swollen legs along with protein in their urine so they have hypertension protein in your urine called proteinuria and then swelling of their legs called pedialidema and they may have symptoms like severe abdominal pain confusion it could kill it could lead to a life-threatening condition called eclampsia which the patient would have all these symptoms uh, high, uh, high blood pressure um, leg swelling uh, protein in the urine which is called proteinuria and they'll go ahead uh, and develop uh, convulsion seizures kidney failure and all sorts of problems and it's usually in fact when i was um i only saw one or two when i was doing my um labor ward post in those days in teaching hospital portacourt and uh, no matter everything all the doctors did the two i saw lo we lost them so these are the things that can happen in pregnancy in relation to blood pressure hypertension so if you have a pre-existing hypertension you come in and you're pregnant you could be treated and you'll be fine you can have your baby then if you have gestational uh, hypertension without proteinuria that's without protein in urine you're fine you can be treated as normal and then you'll be fine and then after the pregnancy your blood pressure may come down normal and you continue living a normal life only that um, that puts you at risk of developing hypertension in future. While preeclampsia is the serious one that you know is associated with uh, abdominal pain, leg swelling, protein in your urine, you know headaches, and all sorts of symptoms that could um, eventually lead to eclampsia and could kill. And most times, this uh, preeclampsia is the cause of um, maternal mortality. That's um, uh, pregnant women dying and also um, high cost of um, uh, stillbirth. Stillbirth is giving birth to a dead a dead baby. So this uh, hypertension in pregnancy known as preeclampsia causes that a lot. So that is um, as far as um, pregnancy related hypertension goes. Then we will talk about how do we treat my hypertension. And at what time do you start treating hypertension? If, for example, your blood pressure was 180 over 120 or over that in the clinic, you would, if you have symptoms, you have immediate treatment. You may have to be in hospital. But if you don't have symptoms, you would, um, there's no rush. You'll be given treatment, um, oral tablets in the next one to two days is fine. As long as you don't have symptoms but if your blood pressure is below this threshold then um, you need to undergo these investigations i mentioned before and then treatment starts the treatment of hypertension st starts with lifestyle modifications that's you know lifestyle modification in terms of uh, maybe stopping smoking reducing alcohol eating um, less um, salty food maybe eating more potassium rich diets um, cutting, cutting down on um, alcohol, if I haven't said it, 
and um, reducing your stress as much as you can, you know, um, doing um, healthy exercises, if you're obese, losing weight, these are some of the things that um, you need to do to um, lower your blood pressure. So, if these don't do the job, then you, you would have to be put on medication, which we refer to as antihypertensives. Antihypertensives. So, if you're a black person like me, and you do not suffer from diabetes, we, the uh, recommended uh, blood pressure medication uh, what we call calcium channel blockers. That's the first line. And these calcium channel blockers are medications like amlodipine, felodipine. So any black person who does not suffer from diabetes but is hypertensive, the first blood pressure medication, any doctor who knows what they are doing will prescribe for you is amlodipine. But if you are diabetic, excuse me, if you are diabetic, the doctor will prescribe the class of medication we call ACE inhibitors. ACE means angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. These are medications like ramipril, lisinopril, you know, such medication will be the first line. The first blood pressure medication your doctor will prescribe if you're hypertensive and diabetic. But if you're not diabetic and you're a black person, the first line is amlodipine or any other calcium channel block and effect dipine. But usually amlodipine is the drug of choice. And then you'll be taking this medication and your blood pressure is monitored. If and usually we start on a low dose, like amlodipine. You could start at 5 milligram, and then you keep checking the blood pressure. If the blood pressure does not go down below 140-90, for somebody between 18 years and 80 years, you would titrate the dose up to the maximum. The maximum dose of amlodipine is 10 milligram. If this dose of amlodipine is still not doing the job, and you're a black person, your doctor would, and you're not diabetic, your doctor would add another group of medications we call thiazide uh, diuretics. But these days we use the thiazide uh, um, derivatives like indapamide. So what it means is that if the amlodipine has not controlled your blood pressure at uh, that uh, 10 milligram, you will be prescribed indapamide or any of the medications in that family. If the cost is an issue, you may be prescribed uh, bendroflumethiazide, which is also in that family, is cheaper and does the job. But the uh, endopamide has been found to be more uh, effective. So what it means is that you will be on these two blood pr pressure medication, and then your blood pressure will continue to be monitored. If these two blood pressure medications still didn't do the job, your doctor would prescribe you now, if you're not a diabetic, that ACE inhibitor, like ramipril. So what it means now is that you're going to be on ramipril, indapamide, and amlodipine. The three of them every day. The ACE inhibitors, like ramipril, cause, can cause chronic cough. For some people, that they have this hacking cough that no matter whatever you do, the cough doesn't shake. So you will have to stop. And you can be prescribed medications that are related to ACE inhibitors, who are, which are called angiotensin, um, um, angiotensin, like, like angiotensin, um, what do we call them now? Things like losatan and vasatan. What are we calling them now? What? Oh my blood, blood, blood. It's called um, angiotensin convert. No, the ACE is angio. No, no, no. What do we call? Okay, medications. I will remember it now. I don't know why it escaped my brain. But if you you're taking ramipril and you have chronic cough, 
you will need to stop the uh, 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 prayer and take what we call it's called ARB. They're called ARBs, yeah, angiotensin receptor blockers. Yes, ARBs. They are called angiotensin receptor blockers, like losartan, vasartan. You take them if the ramipril or all those ACE inhibitors are causing you cough. And if you're taking ACE inhibitors, because it does have its metabolism through the kidneys, you will need to check your kidney function from time to time, at least within two weeks of starting, or even before starting, to make sure your kidneys are functioning all right, and then when you, anytime the dose is increased. So anyway, so even if you're on this tray, your blood pressure will continue to be monitored. Sometimes the job is done, you have to be on this three medication and your blood pressure will be fine. And then you keep taking it to keep the uh, medication, uh, blood pressure at bay. But sometimes the three will still not do the job. At this stage, you are said to be suffering from resistant hypertension. At this stage, and I'm talking about this three medication at the highest approved dosages. So, like Ramipril on 10 milligram, in Dapamine on 2.5 milligram, Amlodipine 10 milligram. These are their maximum. And you're on them, and you're taking them regularly. And also doing the lifestyle thing, doing little exercise, not um, drinking too much alcohol, not smoking, not taking high salt diet, and the blood pressure is still not controlled. So, a fourth medication may have to be, would have to be introduced, I'm afraid. At that point in time, there are some medications that we can use at this stage. You know, there's something we call potassium sparing diuretic, uh, diuretic like spironolactone, or you can use alpha blockers like doxazosine. These are the medications that you can add at this stage. And some people even be, uh, being on this four medication, their, medica uh, their blood pressure is not listening. So at that point in time, they, you, they will be referred to a, 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 um, a cardiologist who will do all sorts of investigations to understand whether this is secondary hypertension, because most cases of resistant hypertension are secondary, which means there's something that is causing it that has not been identified. So extra investigations will be done to identify and see what is causing. Some of the things that can cause secondary hypertension are things like thyroid problems, like hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, Cushing's disease, Aldestronism, some things we call uh, pheochromocytoma. You know, these are some of the things that if you suffer from them, it can shoot up your blood pressure. And no matter what you give the patient, the blood pressure will still be where it is until you identify that they have this problem. So if you treat this problem, their blood pressure responds and crashes. And this happens only in about 5 to 10 percent of all the cases of hypertension. In all the other 90, these medications would work. Let me see whether I've covered everything. I've talked about symptoms. Before I look at your questions, I've talked about symptoms. I've talked about complications. I've talked about diagnosis, pregnancy. Don't want to miss anything. I've talked about treatment, which one to start with, the medication to start with in a black person. If it's a white person, if there's any white person watching me, the first blood pressure medication that you're prescribed is ACE inhibitor. The angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor is your first line, Ramipril, if you're white. And then if that didn't work, then you have calcium channel blockers like amlodipine added. So you go, you know, and then if that didn't work, they will prescribe in damper mind. So you start with that ACE to C and D. But if you're a black man and you don't suffer from diabetes, you must start with amlodipine. And it's titrated to the highest dose. If that didn't control your blood pressure, then you will have the D, which is the diuretic, in dapamide added. If those two didn't do the job at their highest dosages, then you have the ACE inhibitor added. And remember, if you're taking ramipril, lisinopril, 
and then you're coughing for a long time and they're treating you oh, maybe you have tb you have this you have that i've seen patients who you know i used to have a friend in potaco who was on ramipril and he was coughing he was going to different, different hospitals x-ray did. so when i came to potaco he told me i said which medication do you take he said oh i'm taking ramipril i said no that's why you're coughing stop the ramipril I stopped the Ramipril. I said, okay, I'm going to ask you to take the, uh, uh, in fact, as a black man, I don't even know why they started your Ramipril and you're not diabetic. I said, stop it. I'll prescribe you uh, amlodipine. Within two, two weeks, this cough that he's been running around different hospitals stopped. That's chief, you know. The cough stopped. So a lot of people will have this hacking cough and they will not understand what it is. They'll say, oh, today is tough. They will tell them it's tough. Tomorrow is straight to, you know, you know the way they talk in Nigeria. You know, and then the amlodipine, and also for some people, it causes them um, leg swelling. So, if you're taking um, uh, amlodipine and your leg is swelling, just know that it's that amlodipine that is causing the swelling. So, don't go thinking that your kidney has failed or your heart has failed. So, I think, um, I hope I've been able to cover and, and impact some new information and new knowledge to you all i shall now look at the questions are they many what are you doing now, baby i thought you were helping i thought you were helping can you imagine what moral support you should be telling me that there are 20 questions or 100 questions and then <laughs> okay Baby, I hope you learned something yourself. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I'm going to look at any questions if there are. I'm assuming that, you know, my delivery was quite easy. That everybody would have um, uh, understood. Yeah, yeah. So... I am looking for questions. I hope nobody's going to ask me what is hypertension today. <laughs> or oh, does, does eating garlic cause hypertension? You know the way? <laughs> Somebody will say, Doctor, does eating garlic cause hypertension? Yes, arteries carry oxygenated blood from the heart to the body. Yes. For last day, you're absolutely right. Yes, as in the yes, primary and secondary hypertension. Abby, how you doing? Abby, my brother. Yes, hypertension is high blood pressure. Hypertension is low blood pressure. While normal tension is normal blood pressure. So, yeah, thank you. Violet, I'm not talking about baby and prolapse. I'm talking about hypertension, so I'm going to limit my scope to hypertension asking me whether a baby with prolapse a woman with prolapse can have a baby is um, not related to this topic chi chi said can primary hypertension be hereditary yes there's usually there could be a genetic um, predisposition with primary hypertension it runs in a family that doesn't mean that if your father is hypertensive you must be but chances are that you can inherit that yes Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for last year you are summarizing it for me for them to understand what your, you know. So Chi Chi Albert said, Doctor, I always have a pulse of between sixty to seventy, even when my blood pressure is there anything to worry about. No, no, no. Normal, um, like when we're talking about physiologic man, the normal pulse rate is seventy two, but obviously, like I said, nobody is physiologic. So we any blood pressure, any pulse rate between 50 and maybe 90 90 is fine you know it's fine and your blood pressure of 130 78 is fantastic so please what is causing headache always i don't know what is causing your headache but i said to you that headache could be one of the symptoms of hypertension i didn't mean that every headache is caused by hypertension 
So if you do have a leg, it could be due to hypertension, it could be due to dehydration, it could be due to uh, malaria, it could be due to typhoid, it could be due to meningitis, it could be due to cancer, it may be due to migraine, cluster headache. There's so many reasons. I don't know why you do have a leg. Yeah. Messi, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The size of the, not cafe, calf. Calf is spelled as, I didn't say the size of the calf determines the, yeah. I mean calf. Calf is spelled as C for Charlie, U for uniform, F, F, calf. Calf is that thing you tie around your uh, arm to measure blood pressure, whether manual or automated. The size, there is a size for every arm. So you don't just go and take a blood pressure medication um, equipment with very small calf and tie it on the hand of somebody with very fat this thing the blood pressure will just shoot up that's not that's not going to be your then if any day you have um a blood pressure medication um a blood pressure equipment with you look at the calf you will see there clearly written this calf is for arm of this size to this size it is written there but many people don't know, so they just see you. And even it doesn't, it's not only in Nigeria, even in the UK. I, I always correct some nurses, both white and this. They just oh bring your hand. They will just use one tiny calf and put in, in the uh, in the arm of somebody that um uh, you know, and then the blood you will say, Doctor, the blood pressure is two hundred. I said, But come on. And then they, they also use electronic uh, equipment to measure people whose um, pulse um, is irregular. If your pulse is irregular, boom, 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 you, you will, the, the automated cannot measure it. The automated measures based on the fact that you believe that your blood pressure is, your pulse rate is regular. Means your heart is beating, boom, 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 boom. So that equipment uses that to measure your blood pressure. But if your blood pressure is, if your pulse rate, your heartbeat, which is your pulse rate, is irregular, as in maybe it's going boom, 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 the, that equipment gets confused. It gets confused. So the only way to get your blood pressure is to do the manual one. The manual one that you have to inflate the calf. Inflate the calf and somebody puts their stethoscope in their ear and listens and hear what we call, they call that noise, Crotokov sounds. I don't want to go into that and confuse you, but you would. So if you if you suffer from irregular pulse, like people that have atrial fibrillation or things like that, you cannot use automated or electronic blood pressure equipment to measure your blood pressure. You must use the manual. A lot of people don't know that. And the way you use electronic, it's not they're checking your blood pressure, you're shaking your hand like this, you're shouting, hey, if I, come, 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 and they're checking your blood pressure. The, re the, the report you're going to get is maybe wrong. So you need to be calm with your arms stretched out, your legs, you know, in akimbo, you're not saying anything, you're not shaking your head or shaking your hand for your blood pressure um, to be accurate. Is there a particular time to check blood pressure? Morning? No, there is no particular time. You can check your blood pressure in the morning, afternoon, or night. Yeah, you can check it. Blood pressure, people's blood pressure changes as the course of the day. Your blood pressure may be uh, 140, 20, uh, 80 by 8 o'clock. You check it by 10, it, it, it has changed. So it fluctuates. Yeah, but... All we advise is that maybe if you rushed in into a clinic, don't just go and say, oh, <sighs> check my blood pressure. No, you need to relax. Chill first before they check your blood pressure. That is if you don't suffer from white coat hypertension. That fear, fear hypertension. When you get, oh, doctor, oh, your blood pressure just shoots up. That's not your normal blood pressure. You're fearing the white coat. When others are asking questions, somebody saying somebody should help me with airtime. <laughs> you're, you're a joker. <sighs> okay, so for those of you, you suffer from white coat hypertension. Good. Emmanuel Noram says you suffer from low blood pressure. So what I want to know is what is the level of your blood pressure? 
before we can talk about what can cause your low blood pressure. What level do you consider low? Write it in your next question. What level do you consider low? Emmanuel Noram. I hope I'm not... Um... Okay, don't think we have ambulatory blood pressure measurements in Nigeria. We may have. It may not, it may not be very common, but it's like a small uh, machine. They just put it around your waist and then you just go your normal business and then the thing will be checking your blood pressure as you, even as you're, as you're talking, as you're riding your car, as you're driving your car, you'll be checking it. You know, if you're sleeping, it's checking it. Then at the end of, you know, the exercise, the average of your blood pressure is recorded. It's normally less than your clinic blood pressure. And that gives you an accurate level of your blood pressure. But if you don't have ambulatory blood pressure and you have a, a well calibrated electronic blood pressure and your pulse is normal, you can go to your house and do it. Check it twice a day and record it for between four days and seven days. Just keep check, check in the morning, you know, check in the evening, right? And you know, each time you're checking, check twice left hand, right hand, record, like you know, and then the doctor will work out the average and that will be your blood pressure. It's called home blood pressure measurement. It works. But the machine needs to be calibrated because sometimes people go to the market and buy a machine that wasn't calibrated and it gives you wrong results all the time. You know? So that's why um, I know they do it. I, I know that, I hope, they still do it in teacher hospitals in Nigeria. But in the UK where I work, where I live, from time to time, uh, uh, equipment engineers come and check all your machines, including thermometer, uh, pulse oximeter, you know, ECG, to make sure that it's still normal. It is still normally calibrated. So that any reading you get, you will take it to the bank. But, so. Hope you're enjoying your stay. Yes, I am. I'm having time of my life. Yeah, max, max hypertension is quite dangerous because if you come to the clinic, your blood pressure is lower than what it is. Unlike white coat where it is higher. With max, max is dangerous because with max, you come, oh, your blood pressure is um, where 8 or 100 over 10 over 60. And then when you do the ambulatory one that is measuring all, then your blood pressure is 170 over 150. So it's max. That one is dangerous. Thank you, St. Mavis. Thank you, that's I'm making sense. Mm. Diamond, thank you. Plenty sense, yes. Yes. For, in fact, for last year, I missed your uh, in the last topic because you you and I'd like to know, are you in the medical line? Because you seem to um, follow these things very well. Yes. Sometimes people it, it is annoying. In Nigeria, you go to see a doctor, they just check your blood pressure. One, oh, your blood pressure is 150. They put you on blood pressure medication. That is quackery. That is anybody that goes to see a doctor, the only time they will measure your blood pressure and offer you blood pressure medication and you accept is if your blood pressure is over 180 of, uh, is uh, up to 180 over 120. And they say, okay, take uh, 5 milligrams of amlodipine. Take. Then they will not need to investigate it. But if you go, oh, your blood pressure is 160, 100. You, no, don't agree. They will have to do it at least two, three, four times at different times. Maybe if you come next week. There is no rush. There is no rush for you to go on blood pressure medication if your blood pressure is less than 180 over 120. There is no rush. Unless, if you're having symptoms that are quite bad that show that you're having um, organ damage but if you just go and oh they just check your blood pressure and your blood pressure is 150 100 and say take this don't say no unless they have done at least even if they can't do home blood pressure measurement even if they can't do ambulatory as long as maybe uh, each time you come they do they do it do left hand do right arm and you look at it come back in one week's time, come back in two weeks' time. They do it like that three times and it's consistently high. And then they will take your blood, check your lipids, check, do the one we call HbA1c, you know, and then do your thyroids, check your kidney, 
function test, do a full blood count, you know, do an ECG. Even sometimes you may need to do an uh, X-ray, you know, and then somebody will look into the back of your eyes and say all these things before they can say, all right, we're going to start you because you're a black person and you do not suffer from diabetes. We're going to start you with amlodipine. So if they say, oh, start, I'm going to start you on uh, uh, all this uh, aldomet, or, the only time you can be prescribed aldomet and you accept is if you're pregnant or you just had a baby. That is when aldomet is indicated as blood pressure medication. But if you're not pregnant, aldomet is not your medication for hypertension, be you man or woman. <laughs> so Jonathan, thank you that pain you have in your heart may be heartbreak it may not just be due to hypertension uh, my brother oh Adi, he said I can't get a complete sentence without breaking I don't, I don't think it's from here it's probably from you. Maybe if you come to the house, I can I can redo the lecture for you. But I'm gonna save it here. Eh? If yes, are they? Boss lady said if you bring okwa, you will get the you will get the lecture free. You know, nicely garnished. You know now. You know you know my specification. Thank you, Edwina, for appreciating. Yeah, pregnancy induced. Yes, if you do, yeah, pregnant. That's gestational um, hypertension. You can have that due to um, if you also have uh, multiple pregnancies, as in twins. That can that that puts your risk of having that uh, gestational. Yes, but even if you have a single uh, a single thing, which is one baby in your womb, you can still have that gestational. As long as you don't have proteinuria. The protein is not seeping from your kidneys into your urine, and your legs are not swollen, and you're not having all those uh, symptoms of preeclampsia. You you can have your gestational hypertension or uh, or your um, pre-existing hypertension, and you can have your baby, and everything will be cool. Ned, the kettle. How are you? Chidenye, you're always a late comer. How is your husband? Uh, so Jonathan, you're on stage one. Okay, good. What medication do you take? Thank you, Margaret. Chidi, thank you, Dalo. Chamaka, yes, thank you. A lot of people are complaining that network is so bad. It is what it is. Johnson, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortune, thank you. Potassium held it tight like plantain. <laughs> Angel, well, uh, well, thank you, my dear sister. Kedu, good woman. No, no, no. For last year, the lisinopril is an ACE inhibitor. It is not the first line for a black person who is not suffering from diabetes. So before you be put on uh, lisinopril, you must have been on amlodipine, and either bendroflumatizer or indapamide or any of the uh, of their family before you consider taking um, ACE inhibitor, which is lisinopril. So lisinopril is not your first line if you're a black person. And I assume that you're a black person like me. You only take lisinopril if maybe you are allergic to the other ones or you're diabetic. Oh my God, who's doing my baby?
Yes, a bill, uh, uh, do a malachiku. Yes, in fact, the, the, the I, I don't know how they will start somebody on two anti hypertensive. The, 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 the evidence shows that you should at least start with one first, and if one didn't work, then you can add the two. And for a black person, like I said, and I reiterate, you start with a calcium channel blocker like amlodipine, and if that didn't work, you increase the dose and increase the dose to the maximum. And if that didn't work, you add the diuretic or the diuretic derivative like endapamide. And if that doesn't work, that's when you go to ACE inhibitor like lisinopril or amipril. And if this one's cause you cough, you will use what we call angiotensin um, uh, receptor blocker like valsartan, losartan. There are a few of them. And if that didn't work, you can go on the fourth one. We don't, I mean, there's another um, blood, another group we call um, beta blockers, like um, atenolol. We don't tend to want to use them for some side effects and some reasons. Unless um, you've used the other ones and your blood pressure is not still controlled, then you may have to use it, I'm afraid. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I don't think, help me check for questions, if you're giving me moral support. You can't be sitting by my side here and um, not um, being... Uh, yes, let me answer that. Makwa, maybe, um, I don't know whether you heard when I said it. Amlodipine can cause pedal edema as a side effect, swelling of legs, whether 5 milligram or 10 milligram. And so I've seen a lot of people who stop taking amlodipine because of the leg swelling. All right? So you can. You can have blood pressure, cause kidney failure. I don't know whether you've heard the... Um, I've already talked about it. One of the complications of high blood pressure is acute kidney injury, which is heart failure. Yes. This in Kechirita. Oh, I didn't know that. Faye, thank you. Yeah. Kennedy, you can ask your question about hypertension. Hypertension is blood pressure below 90 uh, over 60 and usually comes with symptoms like, you know, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, lightheadedness, falls, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, Marco Achuku, let me answer this now. If amlodipine causes swelling legs of legs, that pedal edema, and it's not working, there is no need to take nifedipine, yeah? You would leave calcium channel blockers and move to the diuretic. So you would start, whoever that is taking that should go to and go and start in dapamide. I will spell it I for India, N for November, D for Delta, A for Apple, P for Peter, A for Apple, M for Mike, I for India, D for Delta, E for Echo, 2.5 milligrams, one a day. Just to be aware, because they are diuretics, they push out water. They, they kind of um, reduce hyper, uh, blood pressure by um, pushing out excess water through your kidney. So what it means is that anybody taking this or bendroflumethizide would need to take it in the morning because you would, the person is likely to wee more often. If you take it in the night, it's going to keep you awake, you know, waking up the wee. So, that's the problem with that, but it works. Jonathan, if your systolic is 145, one, and your diastolic is 70, as long as you're older than 18 years, I don't know how old you are, you know, your pulse is 95. Your pulse is, is a little bit high, you know, it's a little bit high, but it's not terribly high. I can, can live with that. 
but I don't know how, how you checked it, whether you checked it manually or used the machine to check your, blood, uh, your pulse rate. Is there a specific reason for resistant hypertension? The problem is that I don't know when these questions are asked. I've said before that if you use these three, uh, three um, families of, um, uh, of um, blood pressure medication and the blood pressure is not controlled, it is called resistant hypertension. And it may be due to you have what we call secondary hypertension, meaning that there is a medical problem causing this your problem. So then if you use the fourth one and it's still not going down, you'll be referred for further investigations to know whether you're suffering from all these conditions like hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, Cushing syndrome, adestronism, pheochromocytoma, things like uh, <laughs> uh, polycystic kidney disease, you know, chronic, you know, a lot of all these kidney problems can cause that. So on, until that is treated, your blood pressure, you no, know, they go down anything. That is the reason. Yeah? Okay. Thank you, Aisha. Sir, how long will you stay to check your blood pressure? If your blood pressure is, I mean, is it when it's normal? If your blood pressure is normal and you're not diabetic, you can check your blood pressure once every five years. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. And you're young, unless you are, if you're diabetic and your blood pressure is normal, you can check it every year. But if your blood pressure is high and you're taking medication, at least, in fact, if you have, I would advise you to buy a, an electronic blood pressure equipment that you can use yourself. And as long as your pulse, this pulse here, your heart is going normal. Doom, 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 doom. You can use the electronic one and then make sure the one you're buying, look at your size of your calf. The size of your bicep arm here yeah? and check make sure it's, it's um, the correct one if you have that you can check it at home you can check it once a day or twice a day and just be recording it okay so doc what's the main causes of low blood pressure so if you want blessing so some people have low blood pressure it may be because side effect of medication, number one. You may be taking blood pressure medication and then suddenly you're taking too much. You're now, your dose is too high and your blood pressure crashes and you don't know and then you wake up and you'll be shaking all over the place. Dehydration, kidney problems, general illness, infections, general body infection like septicemia. If you're diabetic, if you're having a, a, a hypoglycemic event, you may have hypo, hypotension. If you're unwell, if you're unwell, you have an acute illness, typhoid, malaria, that you're so unwell, your blood, uh, your blood pressure may fall. So, yes, Makwa, it seems your dad has primary. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Uh, I don't know why this my sister Fever is worried about the number of people watching. It, it, it doesn't matter. Even if there are 20 or 10 or 5 people that want to learn, let them learn. You know, I'm not going to ask to be paid for this. So if they don't, uh, don't worry about it. Amechi Be Bula or something. What can cause decrease and increase of hypertension? while on drugs what kind of drugs do you mean hypertensive drugs if you're taking hypertensive drugs and your blood pressure is still not um, controlled means that the medications are not controlling it you need to be put on the right uh, medication and then if you're taking three and it's not controlling then it's resistant and um, if you take the fourth one it's not controlling it still then you need to um, be investigated the person needs to be investigated to know whether there are things causing it which i've mentioned over and over even one of them, I, I almost beat my tongue trying to say fiochromas, fiochros, fiochrotomas. Oh my God, fiochrotomas, chromatizers. 
fio, oh my god, it's a long time, fio chromocyte, <laughs> which is a kind of <laughs> uh, fio chromocytoma. <laughs> Aham sprums is the safe antihypertensive for pregnant women is usually aldomet. The others, but aldomet is safe. I always hear last one, I was hearing Nomel's voice in the background. I was hearing it again. Can overweight cause high, high blood pressure? I will save this video and you listen to it. I explained it last time. I, I, I don't know. I mean, there is no advice to take plenty of water before checking blood pressure. There is none. Faith, um, but you're asking me the name of the machine. I I do not um, have franchise, and I'm not um, representing any company. You know, but um, if you go to the proper people and ask for blood pressure equipment. Which will cause figmo magnometer, but blood pressure equipment, measuring equipment. You know, normally the wrist, uh, not the wrist one, the arm one. Don't forget about the wrist one or the ankle one. The arm, uh, at least if, if there are two machines there, use them and check and see whether they are the same. At least if they are the same, you can, you would have at least know that um, those machines are standardized so you can take any of them. Yeah? So I don't know. Which, which make is um, can heartbreak cause heart blood pressure? Can heartbreak cause high blood pressure? Heartbreak cannot cause high blood pressure, but it puts you at risk. It's not a cause. <laughs> if I take anti malaria tablet, my BP goes to 100 over 10. Is it normal? I, I, I don't know, maybe because you're unwell. If you're unwell, at the time you're taking the anti-malarial, your, your blood pressure could go low because of the illness. Most hospitals in Nigeria check only one hand. Is it okay? Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. Your blood pressure needs to be checked on both arms. You know? Even sometimes, if it's, even some of my patients, I check left, right, and then I go back to the left and I have three and I look at the three and see are they similar if they're similar fine but if one is so high and one is low then I will need to recheck it and then what that was going on so but only once no no Ignatius okay you work in the pharmacy good thank God that you're I'm, I'm happy that you're learning from this Hey, but you say, why is it that once you start BP drugs, you continue? I've explained this before. It is not about the drugs. It's about the fact that primary hypertension is for life. It is for life. So if you stop the medication, your blood pressure shoots back up. Unless in, in the whole school, the whole has helped you to, you know, uh, uh, get it under control. But scientifically, it is lifelong. So you have to be on medication for the rest of your life. Unless it's secondary hypertension, which cause is known, and then if it's treated, that's fine. But primary, which you, we used to call essential hypertension, and which is the case in about 90 to 95% of all cases of hypertension, you will have to be on medication till end of day, end of time, unfortunately. Doctor, can diabetes cause high blood pressure? Diabetes can put you at risk. It is not a cause. A lot of people that are diabetic, after a while, may develop hypertension because of the thickening of the arteries, you know, from diabetes. 
Yes. Oh, for last year, they say you're not into medical line, but seen a lot in line of childbirth. You have five kids, oh, multiple. Wow, you've tried. Hmm? Very. She's not. I thought she was in medical line. This full line, and she she confuses me. She has Yoruba names and she writes Igbo sometimes. For last year, are you Igbo or Yoruba Igbo? Which one? Tell me. <laughs> okay, Ambassador Choma, I, I got it. Roger that. She said, Martina said, why is young ages? I don't think it's more now than before. Maybe because um, there's advancement. And people are checking, but like I said before, a, a child from zero, a one day old child can be hypertensive. So it's not a disease of the old, it's a disease of anybody. So there's, um, a, you know, equipment for checking a, a baby's blood pressure. Their calf has to be small, you know, they have their own. So it is there. In advanced setting, you know, in advanced setting, babies are, their blood pressure, blood pressure is checked. At bed and things like that, you know. So it is not. Um, and about prevention, I've talked about it, so I'm not going to be able to re talk about it again. I will save the video, and you can listen to it, and then you see the causes and then prevention. <laughs> Thank you, Nelly Lillian. Thank you, Genevieve. Uh, what causes heavy head and chattering of head? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm not the pin, lisinopril, and acetyl. I don't know what that. That seems like aspirin. I'm um, Jonathan. I'm not the pin, lisinopril, and acetyl. Last look, that seems like aspirin. I don't know why you're taking aspirin. You know? But you, you live in Italy. Go to the hospital in Italy and they will do a proper thing for you. Come on. They did it in Nigeria. Mm. Lolo, Peter, it was just a great Lolo for us. Her presence beside you is enough motivation. Okay, Lolo. She has heard, and she's saying, um, hello. He's asking you to pass by and have lunch. But he's in Abuja. <laughs> so he can pass by from Abuja, enter flights, and fly to Lagos, and come to Lake and come and eat. Oh? Since I started taking my medication, I don't perform good on bed anymore. Yes. Some of the antihypertensives um, cause um, erectile issues. So if you're anyone that you're taking that is causing a rectal issue, you should stop it. Ask a doctor to change it to a different one. Thank you. Jacob, Jacob, uh, Jacob uh, thank you, Jacob Z. Deborah, thank you. What question did you ask that I didn't answer? Yes, favor, don't worry. When I come back, at least you have one key that your um, your uncle. I will check your blood pressure. So bad no. Can exercise help reduce my blood pressure? It looks like these questions come after, right? Okay, so at least you would have heard what I said. How can one prevent it? I'm forty years old, you know? so. <laughs> yeah, fiochromocytoma is fiochromocytoma, fiochromocytoma. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, my coach is in dapamide. You got the spelling 2.5 milligram. Dog, kindly buy it for me, please. Buy what? Okay. 
Thank you, Dico Cha. <laughs> I've said it now, it's pheochromocytoma. 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 <laughs> Sometimes you just forget. All these are long terms, eh? Uh, which is my brother, Olea. I don't, um, when your blood pressure is normal, you keep having pain in your heart. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I don't understand what you mean by pain in your heart. Is it chest pain? Or I don't know. Or exactly, you know, how do you know the pain is in your heart? How do you know that? Because chest pain doesn't mean the pain is in your heart. The pain could be in your lungs. The pain could be in your muscle. The pain could be in the ligaments. The pain could be in the ribs. So you have to be, you could have pain maybe because, because of ulcer. So we don't know what pain you mean. <laughs> this is my daughter, eh? It's kiloval. I didn't answer your question. Maybe I didn't see it. Lua Kemi, I hope, I suspect you asked this question a long time ago. He said, what could be the issue when there's a decrease in blood pressure, when taking blood pressure, taking blood pressure drugs? When you're taking blood pressure drugs, you expect the blood pressure to decrease, isn't that? So I don't understand what you're asking. But immediately it is stopped or the dose reduced. It rises again because you're going to take it for, forever. So if you stop it, it goes back up. And also, I've done lipid profile and electrolyte urea and cryotonics, and nothing was found wrong. Yes, because there is no cause of 90 to 95 percent cases of hypertension. They do not have a cause. So they, you, 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 um, your lipid profile may be fine. Your electrolyte urea would be fine. Your kidney fine. Diabetics fine. Everything is fine, and you still have hypertension. So there's nothing you can do about it. It's for life. Oh my God! She said, "If heartbreak can cause the hypertension, that means mine will be like 280, 280. Oh my God! Children are my sister. Have you had heartbreaks? Anyway, we have all had uh, one or two in our life, so in different forms. Can it help to reduce high blood pressure? The pain. I've, I've, meanwhile, I've been talking about this thing that the first line on casual channel broker and that is I'm low the pain on the the pain. Then somebody asked me, can high blood pressure cause eye problem? Is it that they're not listening or they asked the question before? Okay. I'm sure she has heard that I said that hypertension can cause what we call hypertensive um, retinopathy that can even lead to blindness. Meko mm. Oh, Falashi, they said, I'm a Yoruba woman, married to a Yoruba man, but I just love my Igbo people and love learning the language. That's, that's very nice to hear. Well, uh, yeah. Yes. Oshe, Oshe, go. Mm, that's nice to hear. Uh, comfort, Obomanu. Yes, if the BP is low and you have been diagnosed with hypertension, you can you know alternate your medication and see whether you know your blood pressure would um, stay normal so you can do that and then if it goes high then you go back to every day glory mother yes there's always the first time mm. i finished a bottle of water what's the time though get to 10 yeah okay so i'll stop at 10. 
How can one prevent hypertension? Sorry? Can high blood pressure make one's legs to swear up? So, that is Nkechi Okere. Hypertension would not on its own cause edema, pedal edema. But you can have pedal edema or leg swelling. One, if you're taking amlodipine, you can have that. If you have a complication, heart failure, if you have head failure, your legs may swell. If you have kidney failure, your legs may swell. So, so hypertension can lead to conditions that can cause leg swelling. Or the medication you're taking to control high blood pressure can lead to leg swelling. So, Ebo, you didn't know that hypertension, essential hypertension is for life. It is for life. It has got no treat, uh, no cure. My people, my people, with hypertension, you're going to carry it till six feet. But if you take your uh, uh, blood pressure controlling medication, you can live normal. But you know, if you don't have complication, and you and it's important that you take your medication regularly to keep your uh, blood pressure under control. If your blood pressure is under control and your heart is working at the normal um, pressure it's supposed to work, you excuse me, you're good. You, you may you're unlikely to have the complications, you know, blindness or heart failure or uh, heart attack. I mean, uh, um stroke or uh, heart failure or heart attack yes or even dementia i didn't i forgot to mention dementia it can cause dementia you know from one day you just wake up you see your wife you say ah, are you my grandmother <laughs> and your wife think you would think you're joking you be asking are you my grandmother haha <laughs> that i remember you when we were in baminda and that's how it starts hypertension can cause that okay i'm back Okay, Oluwa Kebi, I'm not going to go into a blood clot issue this evening. Betty, Omali, I will save the, um, I will save the, um, the session and then you can watch it and it will answer your question. You know, high cholesterol food cause high, you know, cholesterol does not cause, um, doesn't cause um, hypertension, but it can make it worse. It can worsen things. Yeah. Thank you, Aisha. Good night. So, let me go try and see whether there's any question I've missed. Otherwise, I can. Eh? Is it? Okay. Alright, it looks like there isn't any fresh question, which means that um, I should call it a day. I should call it a day. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you guys for coming on board. And I wish you a very pleasant night rest. Um, till we meet again on this channel. Good night and God bless you. Bye.